we're about to get UV frames at the end of So when, when we're looking at um, tr tracks and signs of animals of any kind, you know, there's, there could be some stuff that's kind of more obscure or hard to spot, some stuff that's more um, obvious. But the, the woodpecker feeding sign we saw earlier, right and it's not that common a thing to come across. There's quite a few around, but it kind of takes getting your eye in to spot them. And on the other, other end of the scale, there's things that are really obvious signs, like molehills, which often even really young kids will be uh, familiar with. So, yeah, and I just find it super interesting as well. It just happens that around here, this one you can see there's an absolute load of them. Usually, this will probably just be one or two moles, but a mole will basically, it's the same we see a load here. Often they're kind of quite in a line. Um, here they're scattered around a bit, but usually what it is is there's one mole that has, effectively, it's making a worm trap or a kind of invertebrate trap where it's making this tunnel and then worms and other bugs and stuff will drop in there and it goes along and will cap, uh, eat them. And the, most of the holes we see are actually spoil heaps, so if you think about it, when they're going through the tunnel, they need somewhere for the soil to go, so there's tunnels going upwards where they push the soil out. Sometimes they'll come out and you'll actually see them um, out and about, but it's not that common to see them. Um, but, these, but my landlord's really not a fan of Moles. I love moles. He hates them because the stones wreck his mower. So I think so. Sometimes he puts traps out for around here, which I'm not too happy about myself. But I think that's what his stick is marking the trap of one of them. So I was actually going to show you in here. There's actually when you see the hole, it just it's really great indicator of uh, just to show the size of the mole. They're often I think they're smaller than we often think they are. But I'm going to check out this one. I usually put my finger in, but I'm just like really hoping this isn't one with the trap in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, see, they, they trap them by my house, right? Like, the guy around on my road, he traps them. And then when they, they get the dead holes, and he puts them on the fence posts. What is that about? That's to, oh, show, the that's to show the farmer that they've caught them. Oh, is and that? that the, so they know ah, how I'm much like, they've why? caught. <laughs> they could, they could yeah. just get rid of them and they think, oh well, he's... Costing got, the money. And yeah, then it's, 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 so it's they peg them along. Not to scare other moles. Yeah, the pet up. It looks disgusting, but yeah. Oh, that's good. That's so long term. Mm. <laughs> Unless there's another reason, but yeah, that's the reason. That's, that's what I've heard. Yeah. 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 I didn't realise it's that. So just. How big is it? Sorry. How big is it? The mo so the hole is like not. No, like the mole. The mole itself. So the hole is about maybe the size of a golf ball. A mole, like. Nose to tail is something like that. Yeah, really, so a lot of people think they're really big. They're tiny. They're really, really small. They're really, like really, really nice and soft fur. Yeah, yeah, that's they're right. Like velvet. Yeah. They're velvet. My ears can say magnets. Yeah. And the fur. Interesting thing with the fur is that you know, say with a cat, you can only really brush it one way. <laughs> um, but yeah. with a mole, you can brush it either way, and it just goes one way or the other. Because if you imagine if you're in a tunnel, you want fur that. Some are kind of, no, yeah, no, it is. Really but that's what it used to yeah. remind me of. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. It's like really. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no, I think it must have been half. I thought I caught one. Is that if you look in particular areas, especially if the weather changes a lot, if it gets very cold, very hot, um, like very dry or very wet, suddenly in a particular area, you'll see the mole behaviour really changes, and that will be to do with what the worms are doing and stuff. So if it's like really cold, they'll often maybe they go a bit deeper down, or if it's really wet in a certain area. You might have to move to an area nearby, or whatever. But you'll see it's interesting if you've got moles in your area, just notice the changes um, in the behaviour. Where are they on the coast? Yeah. Yeah, but if it's, do you mean it's like, say the rough is there and the green is here and they're never coming up? Because that's, so, yeah, that's so local that I think even trapping wouldn't, there'd like, still be moles in the air. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, there'll definitely be trunk in there, but um, yeah, it could be other stuff as well. Like maybe there's more worm activity in the kind of the bit with more vegetation. Yeah, stuck it in. <laughs> Let's have a look over here as well. Wait, so the more. Let's have a look in the bulrushes. So these, you should see the, the bulrushes here. These are really, if you have them in an area, um, they're really good fun to. Just to explore and play around with. So this is the seeds of the bulrush, and the bulrush itself is a um, it's a plant that's got loads of different uses, and there's stuff you can eat the roots of it, and a whole load of stuff that you might not be doing with young kids. But it's a really interesting plant. One of the things that I find super interesting. So this is the seed head here, absolutely jam packed with thousands and thousands of seeds. And so if I if you watch here, if I to actually break it open see how many seeds are packed inside. Jeez. Absolutely tons. So yeah, so many. And, can, and they're so light as well. These these could potentially travel in you know, hundreds of thousands of miles to a new location. Or just grow my beard. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they love you next door. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so loads of fun exploring and stuff that could be done with something like that. There's certain areas that, that grows because we don't have it up our way. So right, okay, yeah. 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 Um, we're about to see the other side. Right, yeah, it depends. Maybe it's slightly high elevation. I think they like it where it's fairly rich ponds and stuff, so it might not be kind of nutrient rich enough. So these, <coughs> these couple of trees just here. What we need to do is see if you can get to a spot you can kind of spread out where you can look really closely at some of the twigs and there's also this one here is the same so you can maybe pull a branch down and um, do the same just so you can get familiar with looking at and what I want you to do is just look closely and just describe what you see so, so imagine that you were speaking to someone who like say someone on the phone or someone who just couldn't see just say, yeah careful it's a uh, <laughs> kind of slightly vague edge of it, yeah. but so imagine you're trying to describe to someone um, what this tree was like, and they can't actually see it. So what what do you see? Red. It's got baby cones on it. Yeah, so the buds are kind of reddish, aren't they? Or like purpley red colour. And what what is that about cones? It looks like baby cones. Yeah, they've got these really small small cones. That's a feature of this tree for sure. Anything else? What do you notice about the, um, the branching pattern? So what I mean by that is when you look, so if you look this way, so some plants, they'll have the central stem and the branches come off one here, one here, one here. Others will have opposite um, branches like this, so opposite each other. So what does this do? Staggered, yeah, so they're alternate um, buds, alternate branches. So when we're identifying plants, um, trees and other plants, that's one of the things we look at is the branching pattern. Colour of the buds. How would you describe the shape of the buds? Bubbles. 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 They look like lights. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like a light bulb, yeah. So if we, if we listen to all of these different descriptions, because it's really one of the things I love about this is you can look in a book, in a field guide, and it will say, oh, the buds are this shape, and it will give maybe a technical term, whatever. I find it's much more useful just to come up with our own descriptions. And I haven't heard it described like light bulb before, but that's going to stick to me. I think, oh yeah, that is, it is kind of light bulb like. So I find the descriptions we come up with ourselves are often the most useful ones in terms of memorizing different parts and other, all sorts of other stuff. That I don't know. So the bucks themselves, how would you describe how they're growing? Are they actually growing right out of the main branch or are they growing some other way? Yeah, they kind of, you might see they're on a they're on a kind of like a, a stalk. The bud itself is on a stalk. Again, with this particular tree, this is a feature that helps us identify it. And then taking a step back as well. So if we were to take a step back and say, look at that one. See across the other side of the pond, the left-hand one. How would you describe its overall and kind the of growth form? Even if you, just a rough idea, like how is it? 
growing what kind of shape is it? Okay, so you can sneeze loads of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, can I maybe some of them could be a rebirth nest rather than it being. Yeah, that's so dense. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? There's more, more one side than the other. Is that because of elements? Yeah, there's lots of different stuff around that actually, which is um, um, certainly trees that are quite open grown, particularly the, the sun and the wind will both have real effects. You see it on a lot on the west coast where. So we generally have like a southwesterly prevailing wind and on the west coast you see trees that really actually align southwest northeast and also in places in the mountains that actually help you find find direction but then also where the sun is so south is that way and then you often get branches growing more out that way but yeah so but with this particular one see how the top of it is kind of fairly the outline of the very top of the tree is fairly pointed I don't know if you can see that it's like conical so with this tree, that's quite common. These vary a bit, but often they're kind of quite um, conical shape. For this. And then also, in terms of when we're doing tree ID, so we've looked at very close in details like the buds, but then zooming out again, what would you describe about the habitat? Like where is it, where it's grown? Around water. Yeah, wa around water. Yeah. And that can often, not always, but often, it's a really helpful thing, just generally with any, actually any kind of plant or animal looking at where it's growing or living can give us some real clues. This one actually is something that is really associated with warmth and with water. So, um, does anyone know, I'm sure some of you do, does anyone want to say or have a guess as to what this one is? I have got this tree, um, but so, but, yeah, we'll have a look, actually we'll have a closer look about, these are actually alder, so the alder, A-L-D-E-R, alder, and um, as opposed to elder. Do you have one of these guides, the FSC Field Study Council guides, which is a tree identification. Okay. The only thing is with broadleaf trees, you need the leaves on for this particular guide, but it's still one that I really recommend. Um, but yeah, so alder, I'll show you a picture of, yeah, I'll show you a, because it's a bit old and shriveled it's not so clear but it's got quite a rounded um, yeah the leaf goes round and when you see it when it's kind of green it, there's a bit of a dip in here let's see if there's a picture of it which should be clearer Yeah, here we go. You see, it's actually easier to see with the actual leaf on there, but it's a fairly kind of rounded leaf, quite deep veins, quite smooth leaf. But say in the summer, if you're doing a, a tree ID thing, we kind of look more closely at the leaf. But looking at trees, learning them different times of year is great. And winter tree ID at times can be more challenging, but then there's other things which can be kind of fairly easy as well. With all of them, there's not many trees you'll see that have like no leaves on that will have a ton of cones like this. The only other possible thing would be larch, which is more of a, an actual conifer, you know, like a needly tree, but that happens to drop it in the middle. With the, if you see loads of alternate um, twigs, as we saw, loads of cones like this, there's a good sign for looking over. And then the location as well, they've got these really deep roots. Um, they're really good at holding banks together and stuff, and they love being in wet places. getting your eye and just things like silhouette and stuff like that but the overall outline especially of the younger trees they, they're often wide at the base and they go quite narrow at the top and also when you were doing that um, Kim's game some you will have found the, the catkins so they grow and talking about how they grow on various different things including older so what we're looking at here this would be you'll see can we find any here we've got some actual catkins here. So what this is, this is kind of getting ready for next year. There's this, everyone see there's a bunch here with, of the longer catkins, but then tucked away, there's these really tiny ones just here. You see that? So tiny ones just here, and then longer ones here. So the, the tiny ones are actually the female flowers, effectively. And the longer ones, when these 
these aren't fully developed, but when they do, they'll open up and they'll start giving the pollenies the male uh, flowers. And so they'll fertilise these, which will then become the cones, the female ones will become the cones. So these ones, if I haven't pulled it off, will eventually uh, next year, eventually develop into cones like this, which will then That's right, yeah. No, they don't really drop the cone very readily in the seeds. They'll open up and the seeds drop. See, if I tap it like this, there's a couple of seeds falling into my hand. Most of them will have dropped by now, but if you can see just a couple of small, one small seed there. If you look through a magnifying glass or something, they've actually got little kind of floaty wings and they've got little bits that help them capture the wind, but also if they fall into water, they get carried along, say, by a river or whatever, and then they get deposited at the edge while the wind's spread. And, and there was a question I think you, um, you, asked, uh, you asked, didn't you, about different trees, like do different animals like yeah, different trees? Yeah. yeah, and so there's so, so many different examples of that. And it's a really good question because it just shows that's kind of, in a way, uh, like some of the fundamentals of ecology, you know, the relationships between different mm. species and how they fit into their environment. So, for example, with alder, the uh, bird called a goldfinch, which I was hearing earlier on, are really funny little birds, and they've got these kind of needle-like, really sharp beaks. This is them here, the one with the bright red face. And they've got this quite kind of tinkling cord. And that sharp bill, they can get right into this one, and they can get right into the uh, cones there and pull out the seeds. And there's other related birds as well, which will do the same. So these, if you, sometimes if you want to see goldfinches, a good place to go. Go see if there's some alders around, or they go for other trees as well. But they really like thistle heads and things, but it just shows how these kind of relationships um, form with these strong associations between different species. It's quite interesting to know that you get on both sides and trees and things like that. I mean, it's, again, it's just nature working with nature, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah.